and miraculously it didn't freeze <laughs> i'm almost disappointed at that um it's friday it's here once again has it's arrived hasn't it greetings fellow fatacasters um yes i should have been wearing my fatacasters t-shirt tonight but uh, it hasn't turned up yet uh so hopefully it'll arrive this week and um i will uh, i will endeavor to wear it when i remember <laughs> but there you go you're gonna have to make do with this union jack les paul kind of thing uh this week oh yeah mike stands making a bit of a creaking noise a bit like me um yes so it's been a funny old week um you know but then again uh no two days are the same uh no two weeks are the same really it's um it is what it is um anyway um almost forgot the point of the of the live stream cheers everyone um Once again, Morrison's was sold out of the uh, Heineken. So, uh, Cronenberg 1664 it is. And um, quite enjoy that. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice drop. <clears throat> um, so, um, let's have a look and see who's in. Um, Ian Clark, I see, is in. But let's see who was Teacher's Pet uh, first in this week. And it was Mark Kernel. Yes. Now, uh, Mark has uh, sent me a picture of, um, he WhatsApped me a, a picture of him wearing his uh, Fat Lacaster's t-shirt. And um, I, if, I, if I knew a bit more about WhatsApp and how to get the, the picture from WhatsApp onto my phone, and then from my phone onto my computer, I'd, uh, I'd screen share it with you. But I want to talk a little bit more about that uh, later. But thank you for buying the shirt, Mark. And um, you may just feature in an upcoming uh, in an upcoming presentation wearing that very dapper looking shirt. And then I can see we've got Rent to Kill. Terry Day is in. So is Peter Nicholson. We've got Johnny Random, Dave Fiendish. Uh, Fiend Tunes is uh, here as is Relaxing Meditation, Anton, PFY Guitars, Rob Bald is in, so is Mark Gowan's Grandpa Joe, as always, wishing us, um, a, no, well, let's, let's put it on, on screen, uh, greetings, John and all, after some great weather, winter is back in New York, major rainstorm on the way for those on the East Coast, Coast. stay home, play your guitar, indeed, yeah, it's been deceptive here today, lovely bright sunshine but dear me i took the dog for a walk this afternoon and it was properly cold um then we've got david phillips we've got uh peter collins ian clark who is uh currently dying from man flu hopefully i will survive until 5 p.m i prescribe some of uh, dr bell's magical highland elixir mate it always does the trick for me uh then we've got john mack and david james sean house stephen hedger dr gomez one joe mcmurray amadeus is in so is vincent brenning and there's ben allmark rubbish guitar bloke savvy 64 bill mumbo david evans there's cylon hybrid right there my own old pal from um, the Netherlands there, Edwin Toonan is in, he's going to be starring in another upcoming video in the next few weeks, so keep your eyes peeled for that, uh, we've got Phil Phil, 60s man, Steve Sproson, Thomas Mulvaney, Stuart Young, there's Michael Purcell, Chris Ottowell, Star Lancer is in, Peter S, Cal B and the Rocco Cat, there's Gary Shaw, Deco Dude, we've got Eric Luttinger, and we've got James Hunt, we've got Jonah Cornish, Colin Falcon, local lad, just round the corner from me, Colin, um, <clears throat> there's sometimes dim never thin and who else we got we got guitar me and uh, there's cal texper triple distilled brad dowell steve cassidy how are you mate don't forget steve's uh, little video presentation um basically straight after this one here i'll try to uh, end it in time so that um, you don't miss the beginning of steve's uh, video uh there's ron wells and uh, we got graham reeves les roper we've got uh Jared Ellis, there's, uh, who else? We've got Dudley Squat, Gave You Mirror, Tom G, we've got the Essex Cat, uh, Guitar Shop Folkestone is in, as is, um, 
John Mack. Uh, I've said you already, haven't I, mate? Uh, Ian Clark, I saw that one earlier, mate. It's a struggle, but you've made it. There's Chris Smith saying, hey, hey from Nova Scotia. And we've got uh, anyone else? Randy Upchurch, Chris Smith, Jay Aoyong is in. So is Ivor. So is Mr. Chris5254. Martin Smith, R. Whites is in. So is Winston Smith. And uh, then uh, Dave Lewis. And I think that's pretty one pretty much everyone apologies if i've uh, if i've missed you there but um i do like to try and keep the uh, the roll call um from you know kind of pretty um well, that, well not not kind of make it stra drag out too much and i see we've got another one in there uh, we've got salt saying hello for edinburgh well hello from um, a rather cold and windy red car on the north yorkshire coast mate um so Let's get all of the housekeeping, the usual stuff out of the way. I'm going to have to get another pair of glasses, aren't I? Because these are just terrible for reflections. Oh, look. Yeah. If I do that, it looks... <laughs> where was that? It looks like I'm kind of um, being hypnotised or something. Um, yeah. So what's coming up on the channel this week? On Sunday, as you know, if you were watching yesterday, we've got that uh, the review of that lovely uh, Gibson Explorer uh, that was very kindly loaned to me by um, PFY Guitars, Phil there. So, and uh, I've got to tell you, you know, sometimes when I put a piece of music together to demo a guitar, it's a case of, well, yeah, it'll do. Um, you know, it gets the point across. You can hear all the tones on the guitar, clean, dirty, edge of breakup, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then other times it's like, oh, yeah, this is really rather nice. I think I've come up with something uh, pretty good here, even though I say so myself. Well, Sunday's uh, demo tune for that Explorer is one of those. Then on Monday, um, we've got uh, a White Snake solo. Um, and I think it's the solo from the best version of this song. It's a song that Whitesnake did, uh, well, they revisited it a few times. There's the original version uh, from the original lineup of Whitesnake, um, you know, Bernie Marsden, Mickey Moody, and, and that kind of uh, lineup. And then there's um, there was a, a, at least two versions, I think possibly more, from the um, from the later lineup, you know, where it was all kind of spandex and poodle perm, and I'd lost interest in them by then, to be honest with you. Uh, so, you know, I wonder what song that is. Oh, yes, a few have already, um, a few have already kind of got. It. I think David Evans uh, is uh, was first in there with "Here I Go Again." Yes, we're looking at the harmony guitar solo from um, "Here I Go Again." And then on Tuesday, it is, as usual, a top five video and uh, one that I think was suggested on this live stream a few weeks ago. And um, it's about the top five sidemen and session players. Um, you know, I, th there is a subtle difference between a sideman and a session player. A sideman is somebody who is... Um, as I well as I understand it, somebody who is um, you know more of a touring musician, and a, and a session player is very much a studio creature. But I've kind of lumped them together for the purposes of this video because a lot of players do both. Um, and then on Wednesday again, a topic I've covered many, many, many times, but I keep getting requests to revisit it. Um, many guitar players are very, very familiar with the um, the venerable minor pentatonic scale, but many people have, um, you know, something of a mental block when it comes to its major alter ego. So we're going to be looking at how to use the major pentatonic on Wednesday. Uh, then on Thursday, a story of two guitars that, uh, w that looked for a long time like they were going to be regular fixtures here at Robson Towers. And then, um, well, they weren't. One uh, one of them is because um, it just wasn't as, as comfortable to play anymore after, you know, the, the whole hand debacle. And the other is um, a guitar that, um, well, it, um, it got surpassed. Um, I got an, an even better guitar that, of, of the same ilk. And you'll find out, well, you probably already know if you've been watching the videos, which two guitars I'm talking about. But just going into a little bit more detail on why I got rid of uh, two of my favourite guitars. Oh, I say I've got a super chat there. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Edwin Toon and all this. Uh, saying, cheers, mate. Greetings from the city where Heineken is never sold out, lol. Uh, well, thank you very much, Edwin. That's very, very generous of you. Um, you're a gentleman, sir. Thank you so much. Um, 
And uh, yes, um, Heineken is is probably my favourite um, my favourite uh, tipple on a Friday. But it's um, as I say, the local Morrisons are always. You know, they have this deal on where it's kind of like a, a multi-buy where you can buy um, three packs th or three 10-can slabs for uh, £23. And there's only ever one left. So I, I just have to buy whatever there's <laughs> kind of two or more left in uh, the past few, which has been the Cronenberg. Anyway, speaking of Cronenberg, here we go. Uh, let's have a look, see what's been going on in the chat. Um PFY Guitars saying, must say I prefer the original Saints and Sinners version of um, Here I Go Again. That is the version I'm talking about, mate. Um, when it all got a little bit too kind of uh, hair metal, um, then it um, it just it, it just didn't have that kind of gutsy blues rock kind of feel to, to it. I'm talking about, um, you know, uh, Whitesnake in general. When it got a bit, a bit hair metal, I just sort of lost interest. Um, I oh, see so you've got Dave Fox in there. Star Lancer, what are you saying there, mate? As a noob with my guitar, what are your thoughts about Wicked Games? Um, you mean the Chris Isaac song? I think it's a belting good song. Um, you know, it's. I, I wish there were more songs like that in the in the charts at the moment, to be honest with you. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever happened to Chris Isaac? Because he had like two massive hits, didn't he? Wicked Games and Blue Hotel, and then suddenly he's he's you know he, he's not having hits anymore. Um, oh, there's Frank Bolam in uh, and Far John. Um, uh, uh, when are you giving Jake Burns more lessons? Um, who? <laughs> I um, I don't know. Jake Burns? The name rings a bell for some reason, but I don't think he's one of my students. I, I'm obviously missing some reference there, um, you know, that uh, I've never uh, come across. People are saying that I'm doing a Norman Collier here, which means... <laughs> There's a blast from the past, meaning uh, my mic is cutting out. I'm just looking at it here, and the meter seems to be moving. Um, so is anybody else having um, microphone problems? Uh, stiff little fingers, Jake Burns. I wasn't teaching um, Jake Burns. It was Henry Clooney was having lessons off me. Um, that's where I know the, the – um, <coughs> that's where I know the name from. Um Yes, thank you everyone for, for reminding me that um, Jake Burns was in Stiff Little Fingers. As I say, my brain isn't firing on all synapses at the moment. I can't imagine why. I haven't had enough uh, beer. Um, so I shall have to remedy that. Uh, everyone's saying sound is fine here, loud and clear. Um, oh, Rob, Ball, oh, Rob Ball, you're saying um, it was only uh, a temporary out of sync, I think. Yeah, that that sometimes happens. If that if, um, if that does happen, uh, I'm using Streamyard as you can see by that little logo up there in the corner. Um, you know, I, one way that you can um, remedy that is just refresh the page. That seems usually to fix it. It certainly works when I'm watching a Streamyard powered live stream, and um, you know, just refresh the page, and it, it seems to work. Um, Uh, let's have a, a wee look, see what else is going on. Uh, a lot of people saying the mic is fine. Excellent, excellent. Great little mic, this. Um, you know, it's just, a, a, I think, a 40 quid USB mic off, um, off Amazon. And, um, yeah, it's it's never let me down. Um, you know, it's it just means that I'm not tying up the, uh, the input on the audio interface if I want to kind of do guitar and... Uh, talk at the same time, which is usually what I need to do on the me solo analysis videos. Um, Mr. Chris5254 is saying, have you kicked the vapes? No, I've got me vape here, mate. Um, you know, it's, um, I, it's no no plans to, um, to kind of uh, forego that. Um, <coughs> 
Uh, let's have a, a wee look, see what else we've got. And then I want to talk about guitars and T-shirts. Right, okay. Um, Cal B and the Rocco Cat um, of this parish uh, sent me a lovely picture of um, his Harley Benton. I um, can't remember the model number, but it's the um, it's the semi-hollow uh, Telecaster ship thing with the uh, two P90s and the lovely red quilted maple top. Um, and uh, someone's asking what my vape juice is. Uh, at the moment, I'm on cappuccino. Um, and... What I thought we'd do is we mentioned. I meant to mention this last week because it was mentioned the week before, but you know I forgot last week. Um, email me some pictures of, of you and your guitars, or just your guitars if you don't want to appear appear in the shot, and we'll have a little bit of a um, you know a kind of viewers kind of guitar gallery one week on here. Um, you know, might even do a little presentation and set it to music. We shall see how it goes. Um, T yeah, it's the TE ninety, isn't it? Um, um so yeah just um send me your um send me your pictures of your guitars if you'd like to see them on the live stream or in a video and uh we'll see what we can do um david evans is saying aren't they going to ban vapes at some point no they're, they're banning the disposable ones um because it you know in order to stop children buying them uh, but it's already illegal for children to buy disposable vapes. So, you know, it's it's the typical, I don't normally get political on here, but, you know, it's it's politicians introducing a law rather than, you know, getting off the backsides and enforcing the, the, the existing law. Um, but that seems to be the way things go, and it doesn't matter which way you vote, they all do it. Um, is it going to be like the picture wall on Vision on the gallery? Could do it like that. Could even uh, I could even do um, a, a version of that um, that music, which I th I seem to remember uh, is called Left Bank One, um, and I can't remember who it's by. I always used to think it was because it's played on vibraphones, uh, but um, I seem to remember. I always seem to remember thinking it was played by Lionel Hampton. Uh, but it wasn't. But I, I do recall the title, Left Bank One. Um, so, yeah, um, <laughs> loads of people have no idea what we're talking about here, Vision On um, and, um, you know, the, the gallery, but uh, Google it, you'll find it. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, guitar picks. And if you have a Fatter Casters T-shirt, then a similar kind of thing. We, let, let's set up a gallery for that as well. Um you know, as I'll, I won't put anything up until I've got mine. But, but as I say, it's um, it's en route at the moment. And, um, you know, when you check the tracking, it just says in transit, dispatched and in transit. Oh, fair enough. That tells me a lot, doesn't it? Um, but yes, we can um, have... Uh, we can have some fun with that, and uh, it'll be nice to put some faces to, you know, names and um, avatars that um, I see in the chat and in the comments, uh, every, you know, every day, basically. Um, oh, this isn't bad. It's not a bad port. It's a little bit flaky, but there you go. Um, <laughs> vision on, showing your age there, mate. Yes. <laughs> The Novel Tones. Thank you very much, Colin Falcon. You must have been over to Mr. Google to find that out. Um, yeah, it's I did uh, a version of it ages ago. Like, I'm thinking probably about 2017. Um, you know, so that's what, you know, seven years ago. I did a version of it specifically for, for, the, this, um, for this purpose to put, like, a... a you know, uh, to set some pictures of a, of a guitar that I just bought. I can't remember which one it was. Um, set a pic some pictures of guitar, a guitar that I bought to music. Um, and uh, so it shouldn't be um, too difficult for me to, to recall it. But yeah, let's let's do that. I'll probably get kind of clobbered with a copyright claim, like, but you know, such things happen. Um, uh, oh, there's Moto to car here. How are you, mate? Um, John Mack is saying, only fat, fat Acasta models allowed. No, 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 mate. But fat Acasta, fat Acastaness is a state of mind. If you enjoy guitars, if you enjoy a beer and a, and a bit of a natter on a Friday, if you enjoy just, you know, kind of, um, uh, 
just chilling out and and talking about all the stuff we talk about on here then consider yourself a fatter caster it has nothing to do with your um your your physical <laughs> state of uh, of being um you know it's um it, it is what it is um Oh, lots of uh, references here to Morph, the claymation character from um, a, from uh, Vision On, I guess. Um, and uh, Mr. Chris, 5254, uh, saying, did you see my Hoffner? I did indeed, mate. Yes, so we've now got, um, again, you sent that to me by via uh, WhatsApp, didn't you? Um, you know, and um, I know you can do WhatsApp on on a on a computer, um, and um, you know, to my shame, I don't know how. Well, I, I, I suppose I suspect it's just downloading an, an app from the Windows App Store. So I will um, I will do that. But um, yeah, I remember commenting on that uh, on that Hoffner picture, mate. You were you were a good looking young chap at the time that was uh, taken, wasn't it? Um, Steve Cassidy, what are you saying, mate? I'm on week three off the drink. The stream is very challenging. Well, you know, you've only yourself to blame, mate, haven't you? You know, um, it's <laughs> just, like you know, I like a beer. I work long hours, and um, this kind of 5 p.m. till whenever I go to bed on a Friday is the closest I get to a weekend because I'm going to be um, working all day tomorrow, working all day Sunday. So, you know, it's M Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm usually finishing at work at about uh, 8, 8 p.m. And I've been in here since 7.30 or even 7 some morning. Some, morning, some days I don't even finish till 9 p.m. And all I want to do after a long shift like that is, you know, kind of put my feet up in front of an episode of Wheeler Dealers or Salvage Hunters or something and uh, have a couple of cans and then go to bed. So that's what happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, yes, I do kind of indulge myself a little bit. And, um, you know, Saturday and Sunday, again, it's long hours and a couple of cans before I, um, before I call it a day. So... Three weeks off the beer, that'd be a challenge. Um, but I, that's, a, that's a video that's coming up, actually. Um, I'm currently uh, working on videos for, let me um, just give you, just get a little bit of an idea of how far in advance I do these things. Um, I'm currently working on videos for a uh, week commencing the uh, Monday, the 22nd of April. Um, so that is when, uh, that, you know, when the video, that, the couple of videos I need to talk about actually that are coming up then, um, that's when the, uh, the video that I'm going to be doing, which is a day in the life of a guitar teacher and, uh, YouTube kind of legend. I, I, no, I'm not going to call it that, but you know what I mean? Um, just basically kind of showing you a little bit behind the scenes, you know, kind of, uh, from, uh, getting out of bed on a morning. Don't worry. You're not going to see me in my pajamas, um, from getting out of bed on a morning right the way through to, um, you know, kind of, uh, calling a day at the end of the day. And you'll see kind of a, a condensed version of, uh, a day in a typical day in my, uh, in my daily existence. And, um, you know, I found that uh, behind the scenes kind of videos tend to do well. So you know, there's um, that there's some um, there's some mileage in that. I think, and another video that will be coming up uh, round about the same time is a top five Tuesday video when I'm going to be talking about um, the top five guitars that I'm gassing for at the moment. You know, gear acquisition syndrome. Um, we're not talking about fantasy guitar shopping here, where you might want a PRS private stock or a um, you know, a kind of Murphy Lab Les Paul or a custom shop Strat or what, whatever, none of that sort of stuff. Uh, although I have got one of those videos coming up as well. Um, I'm talking about, you know, guitars that you kind of think, well, yeah, I could afford that. Um, I might pull a trigger on one of those. And, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's five that are in my, um, in my sights at the moment. And, uh, possibly by, by the time that video goes out, one of them might have actually arrived. Um, 
so let me know what yours are because that was going to be that's going to be the follow-up video let me know if there are guitars that you are absolutely gassing for that you just think yeah yeah i could probably afford one of those i might just pull the trigger um, let me know not in the chat because i'll miss it because i'm too busy blethering and talking uh, but let me know you know email jrguitartuition at gmail.com or you know um i'm not i don't know how to tell you how to find me on whatsapp because again i'm a i'm a newbie at that um but you know jrguitartuition at gmail.com or use my website um johnrobsonmusic.co.uk look uh, get the email form there and just um um kind of send me a link rob bald saying i went 16 years off the beer i went six years off the beer i did uh in 2004 <clears throat> i had such a catastrophically bad hangover just one of those where you know you can't not on, no, you don't just feel a little bit headachey and uh, and a bit kind of groggy the next day you know where it's one of those hangovers where you just want to um tell the missus to call the, the vet and tell them to bring the humane killer um you know because you you just feel like you cannot you this is just too painful to be alive i had that hangover um and i was visiting friends at though we, we were visiting friends at the time and um you know and i had to miss an entire day of the, of the visit i was just kind of like, no leave me here um go out and have fun leave me here and um then i just didn't drink for six years and then um then i just thought one christmas it was christmas 2010 i just thought oh and i don't know why it didn't bother me in the the the, the, the other christmases leading up to that but in christmas 2010 i just kind of got the taste of me on my taste buds and i thought oh to hell with it i'm having a beer and to be fair i've never really had too bad a kind of time of it ever since um a little bit tired a little bit groggy the following morning sometimes but mostly not and um you know it just it, it doesn't affect me too badly and i think the main thing that i did in the, in that time in that period when i was um you know kind of off the drink for six years was um i quit smoking on the advice of my family doctor my gp i got one of these um so you know my doctor recommended it so there you go The lamb is saying, I had a year or two off the booze. Being flat broke made it easier. Um, yeah, well, you see, when I was flat broke, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, back in back in the day when uh, such things were, were an occurrence, I just got into doing my own homebrew. Um, uh, Peter Nicholson saying, how is, how is your blood pressure? Um, well, I always get a telling off for it when I go to the doctors, but then again, they've been telling me off for it for the past 25 years including during the time when I was, um, you know, kind of not drinking, uh, including during the time when, you won't believe this now, but, you know, <laughs> once upon a time, I was quite the gym bunny. I was in the gym four times a week, you know, kind of cardio and circuit training and, and all that kind of good stuff. And, um, and then basically got too busy with work and had to, you know, kind of, I, I don't, have to, don't have time to go to the gym today. And once you've missed a day, it, you feel bad but once you've missed two days you miss a week and once you've missed a week you don't feel bad bad about missing a month and then your membership lapses and so on but point is you know th there was a time when i i took a little bit better care of myself than i do now shall we say and um i was still you know going to the doctors every year you know kind of um and uh, they were taking me blood pressure and they were always kind of uh telling me off about it then and it's no worse now is the point i'm making um so you know so there you go um there's probably a moral in that story somewhere but um you can find it for yourselves because um johnny random's in made it home be appalled cheers um and deco dude my doctor used to smoke in the surgery i don't I ne i've never had a doctor that did that but i remember when i was a kid and usually when I was, uh, here's a proper English expression for you, swinging the lead, you know, which is um, for, for international viewers, that means you, you're kind of uh, trying to get a day off school because you, 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 you haven't, probably haven't done your history homework or something like that. And uh, you, you go to the doctors. 
you know, or your mother drags you to the doctors, right, let's see what's wrong with you then. You know, I've got a sore throat, you know. And, um, you know, I remember there was... Um, there were ashtrays in the uh, in the doctor's waiting room. <laughs> yes, and there was a little bit round the corner with like kind of three seats in it, and that was the um, that was the, the non-smoking area. Um, Graham Campbell saying, "When I turned fifty, someone said, welcome to Sniper Alley.' There is that though. That there's a lot of." Um, I was talking about this to a mate of mine um, over Christmas, and um, you know we were talking about old films, you know, all, all the classic Christmas movies that you tend to watch. You know, I don't mean you know, kind of It's a Wonderful Life and all the traditional Christmas. I'm talking about like the kind of movies that we associate with Christmas, like you know, um, all the old Second World War films, like Dirty Dozen and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, what's the other one? Um, the Eagle Has Landed. And you 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 tend to see all the same actors in all of these films. Where Eagles Dare, there's another one. Uh, you tend to see the same actors in all of these films, you know. And um, I recognise that bloke. You know, can't remember what he's called. So you kind of get your phone out and start googling them. And um, oh yeah, that's what he can. Oh, and you know, most most of these classic old actors, um, you know, from these fondly remembered films all died in their 50s it seems if you make it past that then um you know you're made of tougher stuff and you're, you're going to be okay i'm 57 at the moment so i'm past the halfway point um you know um <laughs> certainly me past the halfway point in the in the grander scheme of things as well i suspect uh but you know in, in terms of kind of surviving me 50s i'm um i'm past that point so we'll manage you know um Michael Purcell uh, is saying, remember the On the Buses episode where they tried to homebrew? I don't remember that episode, mate, but I do remember On the Buses. There's a show that wouldn't get shown today, DME. Um, uh, John Jones is saying, I, I was gutted when I turned 50 today. I woke up when I was 63. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's only a number, isn't it, mate? I mean, um, I'm three years away from my 60th birthday, and... Um, I've got to tell you, you know, I'm I'm finally feeling the age that I was meant to be. Because I was, <laughs> I was a middle, I had a middle-aged mind even when I was 17, I've got to tell you. Um, you know, um, never liked nightclubs, for example. Never liked noisy pubs where you can't get a seat and you cheek by jowl. No, can we not just go to that pub over there? Yeah, but there's nobody in it. Yeah, precisely. I can get a seat and a quiet pint and, you know, read me paper. Um, um, uh, John Mackey saying, um, I remember a doctor recommending a friend smoked for their anxiety. <laughs> yes. Um how things change, how things change. Rob Bald, broadsword calling Danny Boy, indeed, yes. And uh, another classic line from, from that film is, sit down, Colonel. Yes, if you don't know what we're talking about, watch Where Eagles Dare. It's one of the cheesiest, kind of most implausible uh, action movies you'll ever see. It just is, but it's fantastic in every way. And the, the radio call sign, broadsword calling Danny by, Boy. There's a drinking game you can play uh, whilst watching the movie. Take a shot every time Richard Burton says that line. You will not reach the end of the uh, film sober, I promise you. Um, uh, the Lamb. I just had a rather substantial increase on the limit of my credit card. This has not helped the gas at all. Um, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, we have a, we used to have, I mean, because the, the Gosh, about 20 years ago, wasn't it? You were always getting credit card companies writing to you and saying, you know, uh, we think you're a decent sort of chap. Um, um, he, here's a credit card for you, and here's a few checks you can uh, write as well. And, um, you know, and they were just giving them away, like, you know, kind of uh, smarties. 
and uh, me and the missus were doing that kind of thing, you know, balance transfers, bouncing one credit card off another, and uh, not to kind of go into too many details, but we did, um, it did come back and bite us a little bit. Uh, we had to tighten our belts and, um, you know, kind of, uh, and rein things in a little bit. But now we have one credit card between the two of us, and uh, that credit card uh, lives in the freezer. <laughs> so you know it's it's there if we need it but um you can't just lives in the freezer inside a block of ice in, inside a plastic bag in a block of ice so if you need it you can you've got access to it but you can't just use it impulsively um John Mack is saying, Where Eagles Dare is brilliant. It's a very good book as well. I think I read the book years ago, like when I was a, a teenager, because I think it's Alistair McLean, isn't it? And, um, you know, that, those kind of teenage, those kind of children's books that uh, everybody starts reading, because I love a good book. I'll get me an into a good book. Um, you know, every all, all kids seem to start reading when, it, you know, with um, Enid Blyton and, and maybe kind of Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and stuff like that. No, there was um, there was always Alistair McLean books um, living around, kind of lying around in our house, and it was those that I started getting into. Um, and uh, who else was the? Uh, oh gosh, um, is Len Dayton uh, as well? Those were the, probably the first books I read. Um, Uh, Style answer is saying, uh, please play solo on one of on, solo one on your jet modified guitar. Um, I can't do it at the moment, mate, because I'm again my technical numptiness is um, knows no boundaries. Really, I can't figure out how to get uh, my guitar tone and the mic working on a live stream. Um, it is something that I should really look into. And maybe uh, do the same sort of thing as the Lamb does on a Monday night. If you're not, if you're not familiar with uh, Lammy's uh, live stream on Monday nights, I always try and catch it when I can. But um, usually, I'm, um, I'm I'm kind of ensconced in uh, doing guitar lessons with customers at the time. But yeah, uh, check him out because he does like uh, you know. He's, he's got a can he set the pipes on him as well you know he can he can, uh, he can carry a tune certainly better than I can when it comes to singing and uh, you know he does some he basically does some live numbers uh, on the live stream and I'd love to be able to kind of do that maybe I'll look into it um, uh, you're welcome Lammy no problem uh, your live stream is um, uh, uniquely mad and compelling viewing um and uh you know I, uh, I i do try and catch it when i can it is I, I will say though it's not as much fun watching it on catch-up uh because of the duck race and everything um you know uh, it, it's very much a participation event isn't it your live stream mate? So i do like to try and uh, catch it when i can um uh let's have a wee look see what else has been going on in the chat um uh johnny random saying no more time tomorrow so i'm a few more bevies tonight well good for you mate um uh what else we got uh, 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 uh a lot of people uh talking about uh steve harley yes i mean that was a bit of a shock really uh steve harley i i um He's one of those artists that, uh, or he was one of those artists where you think, yeah, well, come up and see me, make me smile. Or it's actually make me smile, brackets, come up and see me, isn't it? And and you think of that as, you know, just when you're casually remembering him, um, you think of that as being the the song. But then you kind of listen to like maybe a best of or something and you think, oh, I know that one. And I remember that one. And, oh, yes, I remember. I remember being on holiday when I was a kid and, and that came on the radio. And I'm, the, the, there are so many more that you, you kind of think of. And I know like his um, his cover of uh, the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun, comes in for a lot of flack. But I think that was the first version of that song that I heard, um, you know, and I mean, it did pretty well as as a as a you know in terms of chart position and everything um 
I, I think that is probably the first version of that song that I heard. And it, for, sometimes the first version of a song that you hear is the one that you compare the others, the other, other versions to, even if you know it's not the original. Um, Jim Krieg, a nice guitarist, indeed he was, later went on to uh, be in Rod Stewart's band. And um, spoiler alert, let's just have a look and see when this is going to happen. Um, yes, in, uh, well, one in, basically in a couple of weeks' time, uh, there's a Jim Cregan solo coming up on the channel from his uh, tenure with Rob's, Rob, Rod Stewart, I beg your pardon, um, uh, McLean books always had the same formula. They did indeed, but you know, so did Coca Cola. It didn't harm them, did it? Um, you know, I, I, I will fully admit that I um, I read as a form of entertainment, not enlightenment. Um, I, I love a good gripping adventure yarn, and even if you know what's going to happen. Uh, like you read a Tom Clancy book, and you know you know that no matter what happens, Jack Ryan isn't going to kind of uh, isn't going to be on the losing side at the end of it. You know, so there's um, there is that. Um, but yeah, I, I read as a form of entertainment, and just a good trashy, gripping detective yarn or adventure story or anything like that is. Um, is fine by me. It's it's just relaxation. Um, John Jones is saying, problem was Steve wasn't taken seriously. <coughs> Excuse me. Like if John Lennon farted, it would be a hit. But if Steve wrote Bohemian Rhapsody, it would be mocked. Yeah, I think um, the... Um, because I've been reading a few articles about him, uh, you know, obituaries and stuff uh, that have been in the press um, in, in recent days. And I think the contempt that the music press had for him was very much reciprocated. I think there was uh, not a lot of love lost between, um, you know, the music journals and Steve because he just didn't, he didn't take them seriously and would, um, you know, not go out of his way to uh, pander to, um, you know, the, the, an, an agenda that they might be wishing to push. And this kind of thing has, you know, has, you know, kind of repercussions in the t in terms of the kind of coverage that you get. Um, you know, but he didn't do bad, did he? You know, he had, I mean, you know, thick end of a 50-year career. So, you know, he, he was a survivor. Um and um, I remember, uh, didn't uh, what's he was what, what was he called, uh, Doctor Robert from the uh, from Guitarist Magazine? Anyone remember him, Robbie Gladwell? Um, you know, uh, met him once at a, at a Guitarist Magazine show. Really nice bloke. Um, didn't he play in uh, Steve Harley's in one incarnation of um, either Cockney Rebel or Steve Harley's band, whatever it became called uh, after that? Um, Excuse me, chaps. Time for a refill. Um, Johnny Random saying, uh, Steve Harley and Steve Wright were schoolmates. Both just recently died. Rather weird. <laughs> um, I don't... Well, <laughs> I'm reminded of a story there of um, the curse of Tutankhamun. You know, when Howard Carter... Uh, entered the tomb of um, the boy Pharaoh and, you know, calamitous things happened and, uh, you know, there were, you know, supposedly the curse of Tutankhamun. Then in the 1980s, I think it was, like 60 years, 60-odd 60 years later, um, some of the, one of the um, one of the members of the of the archaeology team that of Howard Carter's archaeology team, um, you know, kind of suffered a heart attack in in his eighties and and dropped down dead, and the headline in the British press was the curse strikes again. <laughs> it took its time, didn't it? Um,
Jay Aoyong, yes. I hear Lee Charles' Jack Reacher series are an ex extremely gripping series of books. They are, mate. I can highly recommend them. I can also recommend the uh, the Amazon Prime uh, Reacher series. Uh, the guy that they've got playing um, Jack Reacher in, in that show is uh, just, he is exactly who you picture uh, it, when you're reading the books. Um, the problem with the Jack Reacher movies is that they hired Tom Cruise to play a guy who is described in the books as being six foot five tall. You know, d d anyone else see the problem there? Um, but yeah, uh, Jack Reacher, if you like just a, a good rollicking adventure yarn that doesn't kind of, um, you know, trouble your intellect too much, but it's, it's a page turner and the good guy always wins in the end. Um, then check out the uh, the Jack Reacher series of books. Um, you know, it's it, the, the character is very much like if anyone remembers um, that old seventies TV show Kung Fu. Um, you know, David Carradine's character Kane. You know, there's just this kind of drifter who wanders from town to town and rights wrongs and then just you know kind of wanders off again for his next adventure. Um, that. Um, that, that that that's essentially the Jack Reacher series of books, and you know, good entertaining read. Um, oh, Dave Lewis, what are you saying there, mate? I bumped into Steve Harley shopping in Harrods. Oh, get you shopping in Harrods, <laughs> and he was wearing the same clothes and shoes he had on the cover of Human Menagerie. Well, nice story, mate, but, you know, uh, Harrods, dear me, you know, us plebs shopping Aldi and Morrison's. Um, <laughs> Sean House is saying uh, to get six get six foot five crews would need stilts, <laughs> indeed. Uh, yes, there's lots of, if, if, I don't know if you've seen it, either, either of the movie, cause, movies, because there's a couple, but there's, there's lots of shots where the camera is obviously kind of down low and kind of looking up at uh, Tom Cruise, so he's kind of getting that kind of up-facing angle like that, you know, um, just to kind of try and give the impression. Uh, um, uh, what are you saying, Colin? Uh, there are two Jack Reacher series on Amazon Prime, and no, Tom Cruise in, in either, but very good. Yes. Um, uh, sorry, Chris clicked on that by mistake. Um, yeah, the, uh, the it's basically that uh, they took uh, two... Um, two of the novels, uh, the first one, Killing Floor, uh, for the uh, the first Jack Reacher novel um, is called Killing Floor, and they took that and made a, an Amazon Prime TV show out of that, and I can't remember uh, the name of the second novel, but it's, um, it's equally as good. Um, Alan Ladd was another shorty. Yes, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Uh, but, um, you know, Shane is one of my favourite movies. From uh, I remember sitting and watching. Um, you know, there, there was a there was a, a thing on TV in the seventies. Um, you know, I think on ITV on the ITV network, uh, Saturday Night at the Movies, it was called, and it was always a western, always every week. And uh, I remember watching, you know, kind of John Wayne and uh, Randolph Scott films with me dad. Um, you know, because it was a Saturday, like I was maybe kind of eight or nine years old, and he he let me have a sip of his beer or make a shandy for me. So kind of uh, Shane with Alan Ladd is one of those films that has those kind of memories for me. Um, uh, Dr. Gomez, one is saying, you're big enough to play Jack Reacher, John. Yes. Um, but um, <laughs> the only six-pack I'll ever have is uh, is is this kind. <laughs> you know? um, so something tells me that I may have the height, but other physical attributes is uh, are ones that I lack. Um, Steve Cassidy, <laughs> Cruiser's Reacher is a bit like casting Gary Coleman to play the dude in the Green Mile. What are you talking about, Willis? Uh, <laughs> right. Um, what else have I missed? Um, Oh, Grasshopper, yes, the uh, the the seventies kung fu kung fu movie. Um, Martin B Bix is saying Killing Floor is a great read, excellent opening and introduction to Reacher. I I would agree with that, mate. Um, 
David Evans, John, kind of remember Kung Fu in the 70s, but I do remember uh, Monkey Magic with Sandy and Pigsy. Uh, that's a new one on me, mate. Um, was was that that dubbed Monkey uh, Magic, or was it just called Monkey? Was that that dubbed either Japanese or Korean uh, show? I can't remember. But there was another one that was... I remember something called The Water Margin, which was on around about the same time, and I often get the two confused. Uh, I'm a six. Let's get it back to guitars. You know what? You know when in all the videos where I say, um, you know, don't forget the live stream every Friday. We talk about music and guitars and many other things. Well, we kind of strayed into the many other things kind of territory, haven't we? But I'm a six forty sing. John ever played a seventy two telly telly deluxe? Double wide range humbuckers. Had one years ago. Wish I still had it. Great guitar. I've never played an original one, mate. No, I haven't. Um, I've played... I might even have review, reviewed one on the channel. I can't remember. But I've played um, various Fender and Squire uh, reissues and reimaginings of, of that guitar that have belonged to students over the years. I don't think I've ever played any guitar if memory serves me correctly which we can't always treat as reliable um with those cunefer pickups um you know that kind of copper um iron and nickel alloy magnets in them which apparently gives them a a unique tone um maybe i should uh, try and source one and see what i think because you know telecasters with humbuckers that's very much my kind of thing isn't it um uh john jones is saying how big a plus are stainless steel frets once you've tried them, mate you'll never go back um <clears throat> in what might be regarded as a sacrilegious move when i've got the uh, budget to do so this guitar is getting stainless steel frets i'm so impressed with um with the stainless steel frets that uh, Agrajag put onto the uh, that jet guitar, which is over there, and I can't be bothered walking two steps to go and get. Um, but, you know, I'm going to get them to put some stainless steel frets in me, Les Paul. Sacrilege, I hear the purists sh shout. Well, yeah, but it's a, it's a cheap Les Paul. It's the cheapest Gibson Les Paul. Uh, it's not like I'm defacing a, you know, a Murphy Lab or a, an original 59 or anything, is it? Uh, but stainless steel frets, the, the pluses for them are that they feel absolutely glassy and smooth to play on. It is just incredibly silky smooth playing experience. And, um, you know, yes, it's, it's an expensive thing to have done, but they pay for them. So if you play your guitar heavily and regularly, um, then... Uh, eventually your frets are going to need some treatment. They're going to need leveling and crowning. The, you, you're going to get fret buzz and you're going to get bends choking off and that kind of thing because the frets wear down, but not with stainless steel frets. So you're saving yourself money in the future. And it's, you know, right from the outset, it's a, it's a better, um, you know, kind of playing experience. Um, uh, Jan is asking, are you planning to go to the London Gibson garage? No, um, not because I have anything against that particular um gibson outlet it's just that um london is a long way from me you know comparatively speaking when you live in the uk you know if you i know if you're in the usa or australia or somewhere you know uh 300 miles is virtually next door but uh in the uk you know it, it's a long old drag for me to get down to london uh i don't drive so i'll be relying upon um our wonderful public transport network and um you know uh so it it will be just too much of a um of a, of a bind to get there to just kind of go up at some guitars that i can look at on the in, look at on the internet um uh triple distilled is saying have you ever played a gnl gnl guitar with mfd pickups yes i have but uh uh but not recently and not in in a video it basically was a student's guitar that he brought and i plugged it into uh what was i using at the time i think it was probably i plugged it i pr probably plugged it into the old vox tone lab that i had and initial impressions were exactly what you'd expect it was 
it looked like a Telecaster and it, it sounded very much like one as well. Um, uh, Jan is saying, what's your Desert Island gear? Money, no object. Well, funnily enough, I've got a video coming up on that. In, um, let's have a look, see when that's going to be. Um, that is going to be coming up in, uh, oh, on the 16th of April. Um, I'm going to be talking about my uh, top five money, no object guitars. Uh, so I can't really say too much at the moment because then nobody's going to watch that video. Um, it's, um, but let's say there would be, um, there would be um, something from a Fender um, heritage, not necessarily a Fender guitar, but something that Fe Leo Fender um, has um, has some skin in the game for. There would be something that um, Ted McCarty uh, designed. There would be a couple of custom builds from different builders. Um, one from Bennett Crimson uh, Custom Guitars and one from uh, somewhere else. And um, I can't think what, oh yeah, and, and a certain uh, very highly regarded, um, <clears throat> shall we say, Gibson Alternative. Um, kind of brand, and that's as much as I'm going to say at the moment. Uh, oh, far John's off for his tea. See you all next week. Um, anyway, uh, we're getting up to like 57 minutes in, and um, what are you saying there, Rob? Uh, I bought my wife a new ring for Christmas. Vacuum cleaner is now working a treat. Oh, I'll tell you a little story about that before I go. Last Christmas, or was it the Christmas before? I can't remember. It was Christmas recently when I was out walking the dog. I um like on the second or third of December, I saw a bloke kind of getting a a big big kind of uh, vacuum cleaner box out of his out the back of his car, and it had like a big pink ribbon on it and a bow and everything. And I'm just hoping for that guy's sake that this was a joke that maybe he'd kind of uh, put, done like the kind of Russian dolls kind of thing and put a box inside a box inside a box, you know. And the outer box was like maybe I don't know, you know, the, 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 this Dyson or Vax vacuum cleaner that he put a big bow on, you know. Uh, that they'd better have been like a, a sapphire necklace or something in inside there because when his missus kind of saw a vacuum cleaner box under the uh, under the tree on Christmas morning. DME, that better have, been, better have been a joke. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I don't want to hog uh, too much more of your time, chaps. Um, you're, probably all, you're probably all on a few beers and you need to go and uh, answer the call of nature uh, before you uh, get ready for Steve Cassidy's video. So go and check out Steve um, immediately after this video, 6 p.m. UK time. Uh, don't forget uh, Johnny Budget Guitar Show. He's on at 6.30 on a Sunday. And, of course, The Lamb on Monday as well, on Monday evening as well. I think 7 p.m., isn't it, mate? Uh, so go and check out all of those guys. I've got a curry waiting for me downstairs, so I'm going to wrap things up there. Thank you once again for turning up and watching a fat, bald lad talk. Absolute nonsense for an hour. It's been a blast, and I'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me. But for now, time, gentlemen, please. <laughs>